Hello, and thanks for joining us for online worship. I wanted to begin today with an announcement about some changes that are coming up to our online worship. Don't worry, we'll continue to offer online worship, and we continue to be excited about the opportunity to serve you with God's Word in this way. At the same time, there will be some changes. There will be a new venue and new opportunity. We are blessed as Resurrection to be part of a multi-site congregation. To this point, we've been recording our services at our Verona campus, so today you're seeing these surroundings that look familiar. We also have a location in Monroe, Wisconsin, and going forward, we will be filming from our Monroe location. So it's the same congregation, you'll see the same preachers, but things will look a little different inside the sanctuary itself. So that's one change. It will be a new venue, but don't worry. It will be the same online service, and it will still be Resurrection with your church. The second one is a new opportunity. One of the reasons for making the change in venue is that at our Monroe location, we can live stream the service. So that will take place Sundays at 10.30 a.m., beginning on April 25th. So every Sunday, if you want to join in in a live service, you can do so Sunday at 10.30 a.m. But then there will also be the opportunity a few days later that that same live stream service will be posted to our church YouTube channel, The Resurrection Channel. If you're already subscribed, you'll continue to get notifications. If that's how you're viewing online worship, you will still be able to do that. Just now you'll have the new opportunity to watch live on Sunday at 10.30, or you can watch on the YouTube channel the weekend following. Due to this transition, uh, it was necessary for one week for us to uh, reuse a service. Full disclosure, the service that you're about to see is the same as our six months to Easter celebration that took place on October 4th of 2020. Now, if you have a really good memory, some of it might sound familiar, maybe even the sermon will sound a little familiar. Uh, but again, just for this one week for this transition, this online service is one that we've already posted before. But we thought that this one would be appropriate as it's still part of the Easter season and it still focuses on that good news. The Lord is risen. He is risen in you. So thanks for understanding our new venue. Thanks for making use of this new opportunity. And be assured... We'll continue to offer online worship so you can stay in touch with Jesus and stay close to his word. Thanks for joining us. And Easter is far too good a day to celebrate only one time a year. In fact, the reason you probably think of church being on Sunday is because Sunday is the day of the week of our Lord's resurrection. And so Christians for thousands of years have gathered on Sunday, not because they have to, but because Christians want to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Our sermon today is actually going to focus on the center panel of our triptych, this scene that is portrayed in the Bible in the book of John, chapter 20, where a woman named Mary Magdalene, who has gone to the tomb to see Jesus, expecting to find him dead, hears the good news that he is alive and he is risen from the dead. There's something we do on Easter to remember and celebrate our Lord's resurrection. Oftentimes, you'll hear throughout the service and through the sermon, so make sure you're paying attention, the leader will say, the Lord is risen, and the congregation is act, asked to respond with, he is risen indeed. Let's try that one time. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the best news of all. Be ready to repeat that during the service. Thanks so much for joining us. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the Resurrection channel sign up for notifications, and then you'll be instantly notified every time a new video is posted. We'll begin our service with the opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father in heaven, I am, I am altogether sinful from birth. In, in countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. Friend, your sins have been forgiven. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, God has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you made the dawn of this most holy day shine with the glory of our Lord's resurrection. Grant that we who have been raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. In the first lesson, we, just like Job, have confidence because our Redeemer lives, we will get to see God. The first lesson is Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with hymn 141.
In the second lesson, we have the assurance that we don't need to fear death anymore because Jesus has won the victory. The second lesson is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Out of joy and anticipation for the gospel, please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Alleluia. The gospel and sermon text for today is John chapter 20, beginning at verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside, facing the tomb, weeping. As she wept, she bent over, looking into the tomb. She saw two angels in white clothes standing where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and one at the feet. They asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? She told them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. After she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you carried him off, tell me where you laid him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and replied in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus told her, Do not continue to cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She also told them the things he said to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I I believe in God, the the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We invite all the children of God to gather around for this special children's message. Now, what I'm holding might appear to be an ordinary plastic egg container, and there are plastic eggs inside, but these aren't the fragile ones that you're going to make an omelet with. These eggs contain things from the account of Jesus' death and resurrection that help us to tell the true story of Easter. Remember what Easter is all about. It's about this good news. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Now we're not going to look at all 12 of these eggs today. For our devotion, we'll just look at a few of them that help us tell the account. So in this egg, we have here, and hopefully you can see these, they're a little bit small, I'll walk a little closer, three nails in the shape of a cross that remind us Jesus was nailed to a cross 
to bleed and die and take away all of our sins. Indeed, good news for Easter. Then after Jesus died, they took a cloth and they wrapped it around his body to prepare him for burial. Actually, if you look at the front panel of our triptych, you see one of the men is holding one of those cloths and the Bible tells us they, they found that cloth in the tomb, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus because he wasn't in the tomb. He was alive. He had risen from the dead. Now we'll keep going. We're told after Jesus was buried, they rolled a large stone in front of the entrance to the tomb. And by some accounts, this stone may have been so large it took several strong men to roll it into place. That signified Jesus was truly dead and his resurrection was truly a miracle. It, it, it wasn't some accident that the stone was rolled away and Jesus was alive. And then, this is the best egg of all. Not because it's blue, but let me show you what's inside. Can you see? Nothing. Well, what makes that the best egg of all? Well, this egg is empty because the tomb of Jesus was empty. Those who went to find his body found an empty tomb because the Lord is risen. Oh, everyone here forgot at the taping, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. I trust at home that you didn't forget this good news, the good news of Easter. The tomb is empty. Angels declared it. Our sins are forgiven. We will rise from the dead too. Why will we rise? Because the Lord is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Pray you enjoyed this message. Our service continues with the next hymn.
Lord is risen. She is risen indeed. What is Easter like? My guess is you probably have happy memories at Easter. Big brunch, big family get-together, big egg hunt. If you've been in worship, it's the best day of the year. Church is full, the hymns are loud, the floor is shaking. It's such good news. But it kind of feels like Easter didn't happen this year, did it? There, there, there weren't the big gatherings. You were probably at home. Maybe all by yourself. Does that mean Jesus didn't rise? Does that mean it really wasn't Easter? Well, maybe if we go back to the very first Easter and we ask those people, what was Easter like? What was it like being one of those first people up close and personal, the very first witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus? You know, it was actually very different than we might think of it today. Well, we'll take Mary Magdalene. She's the woman here in the center of our panel. What was it like for her? Now, she's the one person that we encounter in the part of God's Word that's in front of us from John chapter 20. But her emotions, her feelings, they are pretty indicative of what everyone felt that day, right? It says, Mary went to the tomb and she was sad. Sadness was the first thing that that first Easter was like. Jesus was dead. Her friend, her Lord, she was filled with sadness. And she was weeping. Now, if you look closely, really closely at our center panel, you can see there's tears on her cheeks. But this was not just the sadness that was visible. Also a sadness that was audible. Do you notice the angels and Jesus asked her, why are you weeping? She was sobbing and crying and wailing. It wasn't just sadness, this was grief. Jesus was gone. I don't think being there on that first Easter was all bunnies and bonnets and brunches. And then Mary goes to look into the tomb. And who looks into a tomb expecting to find a living person you expect to find a dead person in a tomb right but mary found a living person in fact two living beings both of them angels dressed in the whitest clothes she had ever seen they ask a very caring question woman why are you weeping and while the question was caring it seems all of this sadness all of this grief, all of this loss from Mary just kind of boils over in her answer. Why am I weeping? Why aren't you? I had to watch Jesus die. I lost him once when he was alive and died on a cross. And now I don't know where he is. Have I lost him again when he was dead? Can you imagine losing someone twice, losing them alive and losing them dead? And Mary says, it, and now I don't even know where he is. Where have you taken him? Where have you put him? And then Jesus shows up. You would think that's going to solve things, right? But Mary does not recognize that it's Jesus. Now, exactly why uh, we really can only speculate. Maybe it was her tears. Maybe it was her grief. Maybe it was the sadness, maybe just the confusion of this angels, and maybe Jesus didn't want to be recognized just yet. There were other times after his resurrection where Jesus didn't want to be recognized by sight. He wanted people to rely on his word. And, and, and Jesus, who Mary thinks is the gardener, asked the same caring question. Woman, why are you weeping? Who is it you are looking for? And Mary says, Sir, if, if, if you have taken him away, tell me where. And, and, and I will go get him. Oh. Kind of on top of the sadness and the tears and the confusion. This one almost sounds like delusion. One woman is going to carry 
the dead body of a full-grown adult male? Now, maybe Mary is thinking the gardener could help her. She's going to get some help, but is this just delusional? But maybe let's give Mary a little more credit, right? She says, they have taken my Lord away. Maybe we ought to commend Mary for her confession rather than condemn her for her confusion. What was that first Easter like? Well, if we see it through the eyes of Mary and put ourselves in her shoes, that first Easter was sadness, weeping, grief, losing Jesus twice, once when he was alive and once when he was dead. There was confusion at an announcement from angels and even delusion and thinking that she might be able to carry the body of Jesus, and she just doesn't know what's going on. Maybe that describes even your Easter. What made you sad this year about Easter? Sad you missed the brunch, and the big egg hunt, and the day with family? Was that all you were sad that you missed? was their special grief this Easter. Grandma was sick. She lost her health. And we didn't even get to see her. And Grandma got more sick. And she died. We couldn't visit. We got to have nine people at the funeral. We haven't had a funeral yet. You feel that grief that Mary felt? Is there any confusion? Really? A dead guy rose? Really? For, for real? Really? I've never seen that happen. I'm going to rise? Really? That's not confusion. That's delusion. Thinking I'm going to rise because another dead guy rose. It ain't so. That's what my sin tells me. It can't be so. That's what Satan whispers in our ears. It can't be for me. That's what my guilt tells me. What's Easter like? Sadness, grief, confusion, delusion. Until Jesus shows up. And with just one word, everything changed. Just one word, her name, Mary. And everything changes. Her eyes are opened, her heart is changed, her soul is different. Just one word. Jesus used just one word when he was on the cross. It is finished. Just one word, when Jesus spoke it, he said, all of your sins are paid in full. All of the consequences of eternity are buried in that cave. Your guilt is gone. It is finished. He is risen. Just one word, when the angel said it at the tomb of Jesus. A single word to assure you, Jesus really was perfect. You know what? You're perfect now too in the eyes of God. He is risen. A single word to assure you. Your sins are forgiven. Not might be or could be or can. They are forgiven. They stand forgiven for all time. He is risen and so yes, you will rise. It's not delusion. Have no doubts. It's the truth. It's not confusion. Be certain. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Just one word was all that it took. You might think, well, that was nice for Mary on that first Easter. Because Jesus was right there and he called her name. Jesus hasn't done that for me. Well, let's look at the account and look at what happened. Jesus sent 
angels. The word angel means messengers. They were wearing white. Probably a safe bet that God sent a messenger in white, sent by Jesus himself, to reach out the very hand of God, pour water on your head, maybe on a day you're too young to remember. But that messenger said, you belong to Jesus. As surely as he died and rose again, your sins have died and you have risen to new life. A new life here on this earth and a new life forever in heaven. Jesus did reach out and call your name. Jesus wants you to look at his word, not at his sight. That's what Easter is like. When Jesus shows up, Easter is a day to see Jesus. So, so, so let's get back to Mary, because this is the exact moment that our center panel of our triptych is trying to capture. It's the moment when Mary recognizes it's Jesus. It has been called the greatest moment of recognition in the history of the world. And if there were a movie moment in this scene, wouldn't that be it? Can, can you see the close-up on the face of Jesus as he cries, Mary? And can you see the close-up on the face of Mary as her eyes show it? This is my Lord. Her heart shows it. This is my Savior. Her face changes from sadness and grief to joy beyond measure. And she cries out, Rabboni, which means teacher. I realize it's Jesus. And, and she does what I think any person would do in her situation. She grabs on to Jesus, right? She lost him once, lost him twice. She's sure not going to lose him a third time. She clings to him, grabs on to him. So why does Jesus say, don't cling to me or stop clinging to me? Well, again, we could speculate a lot of reasons, but Easter isn't about speculation. Easter is about looking at the words of Jesus. Jesus himself says, don't cling to me because I have not yet ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus' work of living, dying, and rising was done. But the exclamation point on that work, ascending into heaven, was not yet complete. It hadn't yet happened. Jesus had to declare and to say and to show, I didn't rise from the dead to die again like those people I raised from the dead when I was on the earth the first time. I have risen again to live, to never die just like all those I will raise from the dead when I come to the earth a second time. There's something deeper here, though. Jesus is telling Mary, Mary, don't try to hold me down on earth. Let me lift you up to heaven. Mary, don't think that my kingdom is temporary. Here on the earth, my kingdom is eternal and it's in heaven, and I want nothing more than to bring you there. Mary, don't hold me down. Let me lift you up. Because I've got some good news, and I want you to go and tell my brothers that I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And while it's maybe easy to read over those words and miss just how cool they are, Jesus used words of relationship, of family. Go and tell my brothers. He, he used terms of equality. My God is your God, and my Father is your Father. Jesus had prior called his followers his friends. But this is the first time in the Bible he calls them his brothers. Boy, and if there were guys who did not deserve to be friends or brothers of Jesus, it was these guys. Jesus could have called them runners away because that's what they did when Jesus was in trouble. Jesus could have called them scaredy cats because you know what they were doing the very night he rose from the dead? They were huddled behind locked doors for fear that they were going to be persecuted. Jesus didn't call them runners away or scaredy cats. He called them brothers. Brothers 
bought by his own blood. Brothers to whom he would give his body and blood over and over to assure them, you're forgiven. I don't hold your sins against you. That's what Jesus calls us today. Not runners away or fraidy cats or not good enough. He calls us brothers. Bound by the blood of Jesus. He calls us sisters. And he gives us that body and that blood over and over to say, you are part of my family. I, I want you around my table for all of eternity. You know, that's what you find here at church. You find family. You find love from your brothers and sisters. Love from a bond that is deeper than human blood, a bond that is based on the blood of Jesus, our risen and living Savior. Yes, here you will find acceptance. Here you will find forgiveness. And just like Jesus wasn't afraid to correct Mary when she thought he was the gardener, we won't be afraid to correct our brothers and sisters because we all want to be pointed to Jesus. You know, a, a, a really cool thing happens. Many times the members of Resurrection Lutheran Church refer to their church as church family. And it's kind of cool that on the biggest holidays of the year, Easter and Christmas, what's the first time that we spend? We spend it together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We spend it with our Heavenly Father. Because that's what Easter is like. It means we're part of an eternal family. So Jesus had one more thing for Mary to do. She's supposed to go and tell the good news. And so Mary did. She, she went and announced the good news to her brothers. This word announced is another cool word. It's the only place it's found in the whole Bible. And the word announced in the original language sounds a lot like the word angel. So we might say literally, Mary kept on angeling the news. She kept on being God's angel to spread the good news. And notice who she started with. Her brothers, sisters, people she already knew. She didn't go knock on the doors of strangers. She talked to her brothers and sisters. And how cool that we get to do that today. Be God's angels. It isn't just the guy in front in the goofy white dress who gets to be God's angels. Every believer is wrapped up in the perfect white dress of Jesus' holiness. And so every believer gets to be God's angel and gets to spread the good news. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Why not start with someone you know? Go and tell a friend. I celebrated Easter today. You know what? It's October. Well, every day is Easter. Because every day is a day of good news. That our Savior is risen from the dead. So let's ask again. What's Easter like? You know, for those first people on that first Easter, it was a day of sadness and grief, confusion, delusion. But when you see Jesus, what's Easter like? It's a day to listen to Jesus called your name. Easter is a day to hang on to Jesus all the way to heaven. Easter is a day to hear good news. And Easter is a day when you get to be God's angel and angel the best news ever. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. Please stand. We'll continue our service with the prayer of the church. Let us pray. O Lord God, our strength, our song, and our salvation, you fulfilled your promises by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You, you give, give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
In your compassion, you sent Christ, the good shepherd, who laid down his life to rescue the lost. Drive and out doubt all doubt and gloom, that we may delight in your glorious triumph. Lift our eyes heavenward to see him who lives to make intercession for the saints, and grant us confidence in the greatness of his power. Keep before us the vision of your redeemed people, standing before your throne and singing the song of victory. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive wisdom and power and honor and glory and praise. Make us instruments of your peace as we bring the good news of hope and new life to those around us. Guide us in the use of all that you have entrusted to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Risen Lord, live in us that we may live for you. Merciful Lord Jesus, Grant healing to the sick and strengthen the faith of the suffering and the dying. Assure them of your abiding presence and comfort them with the hope of eternal life. We remember especially in our prayers your servants, Carol, a friend of Julie McNichols who's been diagnosed with cancer, and also Pat Dahl who suffered a fall and is recovering in a hospital in Wausau and undergoing therapy in order to return back to this area. Lord, you are the great physician of both body and soul. You rose from the dead and assured us that you will give us new and perfect and holy bodies in heaven. Be with your servants Carol and Pat. Give them strength and patience in the days of recovery. Be with them and remind them of your promise that your ways are... We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn.
So glad you could be with us to celebrate the good news of Easter. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks for joining us. Please join us again. Thanks.